Let's break this vector into components. When you're not given any numbers, it's especially important to use an asterisk to indicate the variables that you've been given. So these are the two variables we've been given. We're going to pretend that we've been given numbers for these, even though we haven't. Now, to break this into components, we have to draw the right triangle that uses the overall vector as its hypotenuse, and where the legs are parallel to the axes, and that includes, hopefully, the angle that we were given. Uh, now, arrows on the legs. The overall vector was pointing down and to the right. So we have components pointing down and to the right. This side would be a sub x, and the vertical side would be a sub y, because the y direction is the vertical direction. We could say that this is the hypotenuse, and we could say that this is the adjacent side, and we could say this is the opposite side. To figure out the adjacent side, we have to take the hypotenuse and multiply it by the cosine of our angle, theta. Cosine because of cut. The adjacent side comes from the cosine. Now, our symbol for the adjacent side here is a sub x with a dot, because ADJ stands for the length of the adjacent side. So we need a magnitude. The hypotenuse here is A. Because this is an overall vector, it's really not a big deal whether you use A or A with a dot. It's only a big deal whether you use the dot or not when you're dealing with the components, not the overall vector. And this is as far as we can go, as far as the magnitude is concerned. So now let's figure out the sine component. Well, again, we know the magnitude is A times the cosine of theta. Now, we're still having right as our positive direction, and A sub x is to the right. So this is A positive. A sub x is positive A cosine theta. If there's anybody out there who did this problem on their own and got this as their answer, you blew it. This is not the right answer. This is the right answer. A signed component has to include a sign. Now, it would be perfectly OK to write this without a sign, but that's just the magnitude. You can't stop there. You've got to go on and give your final answer, including a sign. Now we need the opposite side using the hypotenuse and multiplying it by the sine of theta. We always know that so, the opposite side involves the hypotenuse and the sine. Now the opposite side has a length that's a sub y with a dot indicating a magnitude. Hypotenuse is a, sine of theta. We can't actually plug numbers in for a and theta because we weren't actually given numbers. We're just pretending we were given numbers. This is as far as we can go with the magnitude of the y component. So now it's time to figure out the sine component starting with the magnitude, and now working out the sign on our own steam. Well, up is our positive y direction, but the y component was pointing down. Up is positive, but the y component is down. So this y component is not certainly not a sine theta. It's negative a sine theta. And this sign is just as important as the magnitude. It doesn't do you any good to get the right magnitude if you have the wrong sign. Uh, so a sub y here is negative a sine theta, because it's pointing in the negative direction. Uh, uh, by the way, I hope that the, one of the first things you did when you did this problem was copy the positive directions. Remember, you need to write down the positive directions for every problem that you do. Otherwise, the signs that you're going to be writing down are meaningless. Um, usually, uh, when you're doing homework problems, you'll be choosing your own positive directions. Well, in that case, you need to write down the positive directions that you're choosing. And in, in these examples, I've been giving you the positive directions, so then you need to be writing down my positive directions. I don't think I did this on the last problem, but it would be better now to label the diagram with the information that we've discovered. A sub x is positive a cosine theta, and a sub y is negative a sine theta. It's always good to try to build the information that you figured out into your diagram. That, that's a good habit. I think I left that step out on the previous problem, uh, but I shouldn't have. It's better to always label each side of the triangle uh, in as much detail as you can. Let's break this vector into components. Now, probably the very first thing you should have done was write down the positive directions. 
And I hope you notice that these positive directions are, I think, different from the previous examples. Every single problem, you've got to start by making a note of what the positive directions are on paper. Also, since we're not giving any numbers here, it's particularly important to indicate the given with an asterisk. Now we can draw our right triangle to help us find the components. And we need arrows on those legs while the overall vector is pointing down and to the left. Down and left. What's our symbol for the uh, x component here? Well, remember it's delta x. Remember that the x component for displacement is a little bit different than the x component for other variables like velocity or acceleration or force. So I hope that now you're remembering this is the correct symbol for the x displacement. And of course, this would be delta y. We can label that here we have the hypotenuse. Here we have the opposite side. This is opposite because it's opposite to theta. And this is the adjacent side. Delta y is adjacent to theta. We can work out that the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. Cosine deals with the adjacent side. Cut. Uh, the adjacent side has a length represented by the magnitude of delta y. Not the sine component, but the magnitude indicated with the dot. The hypotenuse here is delta r. It doesn't matter whether you use a dot on the delta r or not, because that's the overall uh, vector. Remember that the overall vector doesn't have uh, a signed version, so it doesn't really matter whether you use a dot or not. But this is the magnitude of the overall vector. Um, and then we have cosine theta. That's as far as we can go with the magnitude of delta y. But our answer isn't finished unless we find the sine delta y without the dot. Well, I told you to choose up as the positive direction but delta y is pointing down in the negative direction. If you didn't get the sign right, you didn't get the problem right. This again shows that the trig functions only tell you magnitudes. You have to figure out the sign on your own. Uh, according to the method that we've been using anyway, according to the method that we're using for breaking vectors into components, the trig function will only tell you the magnitude. Then you have one more step where you figure out the sign. So when you're using the trig function, you're using a dot to show that you're working with the magnitude of the component. And then when you work out the sign on your own, you use the variable without the dot. Our opposite side here is delta x. But now that we're working with trig functions, we would use the dot to show that that's a magnitude. Hypotenuse is delta r times sine theta. Now we're done. We've gone as far as we can with the magnitude of delta x because we don't actually know numbers for r and theta. But we can now figure out the sine delta x. Let's see. Looks like delta x is pointing to the left, and the left is the positive x direction. So that would be positive. delta x is positive delta r times sine theta. If this is what you worked out on your own, you got the wrong answer. This is not the right answer. The right answer is not delta r times sine theta. The right answer is positive delta r times sine theta. We're going to indicate the sine not just in front of negative components, but also in front of positive components. It's OK not to indicate the sine here, because this is just a magnitude. But then you have to go one more step and indicate what the sine component is. I should mention that um, there's a good chance that your instructor and your textbook are not being this careful about indicating the signs on uh, the signed components. Uh, it might be that your instructor does not indicate positive signs on positive components. Uh, but as I've already mentioned, that's because your instructor doesn't need to do that anymore because they've gotten so good at physics that they can keep track of the signs in their heads. Uh, but again, these videos are designed for beginning students who are finding the material difficult. And for uh, those students, it's really crucial to always indicate the sign for a signed component. Not just the negative signs, but also the positive signs. This problem takes us back to a issue that I've mentioned uh, a couple times previously, which is that in most problems, you use the cosine to find the x component. In most problems, you use the cosine to find the x component. However, every once in a while, you use the cosine to find the y component. That's what happened on this problem, right? 
So again, I want to warn you, don't get lulled into thinking that the cosine always gives you the x component. The cosine usually gives you the x component, but not always. There are uh, plenty of cases where the cosine gives you the y component. So think about each problem on its own terms. Uh, don't just automatically assume that cosine gives you the x component. It doesn't always work that way. And similarly, even though the sine usually gives you the y component, sometimes, as it did here, the sine gives us the x component. The safest thing is just to be very clear about which side is adjacent and which side is opposite. Because the cosine always gives you the adjacent side, and the sine always gives you the opposite side. And if you have any confusion about that, remember that all you have to do is just keep labeling which side is hypotenuse, which side is opposite, and which side is adjacent.